Hello everybody. I want to talk to you today about Emacs and in particular org mode. Emacs itself is a text editor to some extent. Some would call it an operating system. Some would call it even more than that. Org mode is an extension to Emacs that allows you to write sort of markup formats similar to Markdown or HTML with a ton of extensibility built into it and a lot of powerful features. For those of you that have heard of org mode in the past, you've probably heard that it is extremely extensible. It's kind of the end all be all of task management and note taking and it has a ton of different features. Because of that, it can be a little overwhelming and hard to understand what exactly you would use it for. I regularly hear, oh, I don't have a use case for org mode because I have X, Y, Z. Now, one of the big selling points of org mode is the ability to combine a ton of different features all in one place and have a cohesive note-taking and task management system. Since this can be a little overwhelming to newcomers, I wanted to give you guys five different things I love about org mode to help you get an idea of how I use it and how you can use it in the future. Now, without any more delays, let's go ahead and hop into the video. Now, while org mode can be used for damn near anything, in the end, it's all just plain text. That means that there is no restrictions and you can use it for pretty much anything you want. You can write your notes how you want. If you want to put it all in one file, you can do that. If you want to make it a bunch of different files linking back and forth, you can do that. For example, here's a simple file just right out of the gate. You could write this yourself. It's all just plain text. Links are simply just a bunch of text that link back and forth, and you can jump between different files and headings very easily, just like that. A simple key binding, and it takes me back. As you can see down here, you can always jump back to your previous file and link. And since it's all plain text, you can do some pretty complex stuff like using Zettelkasten. This is a note-taking system you're probably familiar with if you've ever seen Obsidian. Uh, or Rome, I believe it's called. A lot of them basically link between different files and allow you to connect different ideas or things that you've learned. And then eventually you kind of build up this web of knowledge that you've learned. And you can do this in org mode really easily just using the built-in link system. So here I can jump to the history of Emacs um, as basically a related note or something that I could want to use. And so this is kind of built into Emacs and works right out of the gate. I have a little shortcut, Control C L, to create a link from this area that I'm looking at, and then Control C, Control L will let me insert it. In addition, there's Org Roam, which kind of takes this a lot further. It adds backlinking. It allows you to do a sort of mind map, and you can see quite a lot. In fact, if you go to its page, you will see that there is a lot of different functionality. It doesn't really show it all here, but there is a really cool web-based sort of interface where you can kind of navigate and look at all these different connections. It's not my sort of thing, but I know a lot of people love this. And so getting this with org mode is really powerful. Um, and so you can kind of install org Roam and take advantage of that. If you like it for some of your notes, that's totally fine. You can have a set directory or something like that to work with it and link both in and out of it, no problem. Um, and it's all just org mode, so it all just works. It's not really a big issue of jumping back and forth. Um, this kind of removes a common issue that you'll find with Obsidian and a lot of these other tools where they're really good for building up this knowledge base, but they're not really the best for actually managed tasks and to-do lists. And so this is kind of where I think org mode stands out. And the big advantage that I use this for all the time is I'll be working on a project. I'm a software engineer by trade. And so I'll be working on a project and I'll just throw a file with a .org extension into a project and I could just kind of keep a bunch of notes related to the project right in there. I don't really need to like link that back into my core notes if I'm just kind of debugging. I can use it for sort of rubber ducky debugging and I find this super helpful. I can log all of the errors that I spot. Um, it's really useful. I use it all the time and this is really useful for something we'll talk about later which is kind of collecting everything together and being able to send this off as an email which I have done every once in a while just to kind of share what I've found and help my team out with kind of debugging an issue. Now moving on, another thing that I love is org export. Org export is basically a really cool way to kind of export org documents into basically any format. While org isn't the most popular format for everything else to use, Markdown's pretty common, but even Markdown itself has a ton of different flavors that a bunch of these projects like to use. And so because of that, uh, org mode supports a really awesome feature called org export, which you can access doing control C, control E, and you will get this little pop-up here, which allows you to export an org file to things like Markdown, LaTeX, HTML, iCalendar, ODT, so the open doc format, 
and a bunch of different ones. And so there's some really powerful features that you get from this, most notably the fact that you can basically write one file and use it to export to basically anything, which I use all the time, especially for things like uh, being able to work on a project and make a quick commit from it, or maybe make a PR and just kind of use all my notes as a way to describe the PR. Um, really useful stuff for software development, but also for just general note taking, being able to put this out as HTML and send it as an email to somebody, like I mentioned before, and a ton of different stuff, being able to turn this into a resume, pretty much anything you can imagine you can export to. Now, when it comes to converting from a format to org mode, a lot of formats aren't as powerful as org modes. They don't convert all that well, but when you do need to convert, often Pandoc, a separate program, is able to help you out and convert to org mode um, and get you the bare minimum that you need. So if you're converting a markdown format, Pandoc is good enough to do that for you. And like I noted down here, uh, that use case is not as common as you'd expect. Usually I'm just writing things in org mode and then exporting to what I need. That way I can kind of keep everything that I think of all in one place in a consistent note format, um, which is really nice. It's kind of a nice way to create your own sort of personal wiki for small little things. And like I mentioned before, being able to do org mime org HTML eyes, I just realized how silly that sounds. Uh, you can export, so you can actually export certain headings to HTML format and then send that as an email, which like I mentioned before is super helpful. Now, if you don't see the format to export that you're expecting, then it probably exists in or contrib, which is basically a community ran collection of different things that you can add to org. You can think of it as the contrib module sort of to org, which includes ability to export to markdown confluence, which is basically the confluence markup format. If you guys use confluence at your work, which I used in the past, it can be really helpful because you can basically take that personal wiki that I was just discussing and document some work that you've done, which is really helpful. And if you guys aren't a big fan of LaTeX, you can export to Groff. And like I mentioned before, you can export to basically anything else. Chances are that if you can think of it, someone's made it. Go ahead and hop on Reddit and someone's probably discussed how you can export to it. Now, just as a quick little demo, let's go ahead and show you some use cases for this. So just control C, control E, and you get this sort of export. And so a really common one that I'll be doing, maybe if I'm using Discord or some sort of um, communication that uses Markdown, I could do export to Markdown in a temporary buffer and then just copy that and paste it in my project program of choice, so Discord or whatever. And uh, I can just go ahead and share these notes with somebody. In addition, you can do Control C, Control E and export to something like LaTeX. And say if you don't even have LaTeX installed, you can just uh, export to a temporary buffer and use something like Overleaf, I believe it's called, and just copy paste from there. Uh, which can be really helpful if you are kind of working on a report. You don't want to install LaTeX because it's like a 20 gigabyte install sometimes. Um, so that can be really convenient. And moving on to another feature that I just love. There's not too much to list here that I talk about, but the actual concept and how it works is beautiful. So org capture is a way to capture ideas very quickly. The idea is that basically you have a simple template, so a capture template that you can use to describe something. So for example, I have that bound to control C, C for org capture. They will give you a prompt right down here to kind of say what you want to do. So I could say this is a to do, this is a movie I'm interested in, a video idea or knowledge or schedule. So let's say we want to schedule an event. Is this an errand, a meeting, an event or a time block? Uh, let's say it is an event. All right, and then I can say, where is it? Is it at my home? Is it at my work? Is it at my school? Let's say it's at my home. And then it says, go to the, and then yada, 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 I can fill it in. Now this sets a scheduled time and the location, which can be really helpful. Now, in addition, you can add context specific ones. So for example, uh, if I open up a programming file, so this is Python right here, and I wanna make a quick little to-do related to this, I can capture a to-do, and it will basically create a to-do with a link to this file, which is obviously really powerful, and you can use it to do pretty neat things that I often do, especially when I'm debugging, kind of linking between code, adding little comments about an error that I've faced, uh, really useful for those of you guys that program and those of you guys that live in Emacs. I put all my information, all my emails and everything through Emacs. A really awesome thing that you get with this is that linking functionality and that works with Tramp. So Tramp is basically a 
way to access remote systems. So you can use that to work with FTP for linking. You can use that to work with SSH. You can access remote systems. You can do practically anything. Um, in fact, if I just go ahead and try and make a link, you'll see a bunch of different stuff it supports like IRC, FTP, a file, news, which is like an, sort of an email handler. You can access help files, info files, email, news, basically anything you can imagine it supports. In addition to that, there's also a thing called the org protocol. Um, I won't really dig into it in this video, but you can set up your web browser to kind of send extra things. And so you can have, say, for example, a web browser open and have it send a notification to Emacs to basically capture whatever text you have highlighted in your web browser. Um, really cool. I don't really have a demo set up, but I'll go ahead and see if I can find a GIF to kind of show you guys later on. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't kind of talk a bit about how you set up these templates. As you can see, I have a ton of different templates. The syntax is a little obscure, uh, but you can learn a ton about it if you actually go to this variable right here and take a look. It will kind of give you a little bit of a breakdown of what it supports, different ways that you can expand them and what you can use different uh, sort of shorthands to tell the capture to make use of. There's really cool little templates that you can make. Like I said before, like I was able to set an event that would take place at my home at a certain time, yada, yada, yada. System Crafters has a really awesome video and you can kind of go ahead, I'll try and link this down below on org capture and a bunch of the different features that it can do. Moving on to the agenda. So this is once again, very short because there's not really too much to describe here. It's basically a quick little way to make a customizable interface to kind of view your day, tasks to be done, uh, and sort of like peruse and check out different things in your org system. So I have this bound to control C A. And so this will give you a bunch of different stuff. So often I will just do uh, D for the day and it will kind of give me a little breakdown for my day. So my day, I just had a little event here and then it says now, and then what I have coming up. And so I have it kind of broken down into 30 minute increments with a few jumps just at points where I don't really care. And that's totally customizable. If you go to your org config, you'll see that I actually set certain intervals that I want to actually be able to see. And I skip a couple just to make it more concise and it will only fill those in when necessary. So jumping to a larger agenda, we will see that there is a bunch of different stuff in here. You can view your whole entire week, different days individually. You can see what's to do and you can kind of jump between them. You can peek at them, look at them and modify them. Say like, I want to say this is uh, scheduled for a different time. You get a nice little agenda interface and you can say, oh, maybe I want to change that. I could say this is actually due February 10th. As you can see down here, it updates the schedule and I could hit enter and that would change it. Let's not do that just because that would cause a big error um, changing the day of my funeral. And now on to the final reason that I love org mode. It is the community. Anything you could ever want exists. If you can think of it, someone's made it. Someone's made a way to integrate org mode with MPV. People have used it to automate their to-do systems, as you'd expect. People have integrated it with uh, their calendars on Google Calendar. Um, I've integrated it with Outlook functionality, which is crazy because it has me literally running a dedicated server just to get this all working with org mode, but I love it. I do it anyways. <laughs> And there's a lot of different things you can do. There's extensibility via orgql, which is basically a query language that can be used with org. And so for example, here's a really simple one, just selecting everything. So this gets the heading of everything that has the to-do task of recorded. Um, so right here I have compiling code in Emacs. That's a future video that is coming up. And there's a bunch of different functionality that you can expect. You can use snippets. So for example, I use yes snippet to give me stuff like emails. I can use it to open, create a little example section. Uh, I can use it for basically anything. Um, and you can as well. It's all able to use eLisp under the hood as well as orgsly, which is something that I've mentioned before. This is basically an Android port of org mode. You can kind of see it that way. Um, really awesome project. I highly recommend you check it out if you're on Android. I know there's an iOS version, but I can't remember uh, what the name of it is. If somebody remembers that off the top of their head and feels like commenting it down below, please go ahead and do so. There's Org Roam and there's plenty of other things that you can do with it. The community is probably one of the biggest things that kind of keeps Org so relevant and powerful. Everything that I see in another program like Obsidian, I'll be like, oh my God, that's a really cool extension. And then right away, I'll go and look and somebody's already made something similar for Emacs. If it doesn't exist, it's probably being written as we speak. And that concludes today's video. 
Emacs is a really powerful tool. Org mode being one of the biggest selling points it has means that org mode is a mainstay within Emacs and its community. And because of that, I expect it to always be around, always be supported, and always be one of the best options out there for anybody looking to take notes, write a to-do list, basically anything that you could imagine related to text, Org mode is almost always going to be there as one of the best options for it. If you guys have anything org mode or Emacs related that you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know down in the comments below because I realize that there is a lot of interest in it and a lot of people that want to kind of know what it can do. Maybe they want to replicate some of this in their own workflow. So just go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Maybe if you want more details on how I use it or what I've used it for, please let me know and I'd be happy to cover it in the future. Finally, I wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to my supporters on Patreon as well as my supporters on GitHub sponsors. Both of you have been amazing. You guys have done so much for me and I can't thank you enough for all of your support. And that is it for today's video, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I love you all and I hope to see you next time.